Hello and welcome to another episode of Bevy Basics. In this one, I'll be covering methods of collecting user input. Because of the broadness of this topic, I have decided to split this into a mini series of five episodes. This video will consist of a series overview where I'll go through each episode that will be in the mini series. I will then move on to describing Bevy's input T struct and how to use that, followed by Bevy's axis T struct, the mouse events that Bevy provides, and finally, touch events. Each of these sections of the video will have their own chapter. So if you look down in the description or at the bottom of the video, you should be able to skip to any part that interests you immediately. In the first episode, I'll be doing a broad overview of the structs and other parts of Bevy that you need to be aware of in order to collect user input. I'll then move on to more specifics about each form of user input that Bevy allows you to acquire. Starting with keyboard, then in episode three, I will be doing mouse buttons and movement. Then moving on to gamepad, joysticks, and other devices of such nature. Finally followed up by Bevy's touch implementation. In order to make collecting user input much easier with Bevy, Bevy provides the input plugin. This can be added to your application by calling add plugin, and then providing it with the inputs plugin, which is in Bevy's input crate. This plugin is also included as part of the default plugins collection that Bevy provides in its prelude. Adding this plugin to your application will allow you to get key presses on the keyboard, mouse movement and clicks, game pattern button presses and axial motion along with touch screen interactions right out of the box. It initiates all the resources and adds all the systems required for these inputs to be used in an easy and idiomatic way. The first struct you'll need to familiarize yourself with is the input T struct. This struct is used as a resource by Bevy. It allows for wrapping of a type to be used as a binary input identifier and stores if that button was just pressed, currently pressed, and just released. The input struct has three families of method. The just pressed for when a button has just been pressed the last frame, pressed for if the button is being currently held down, and just released to indicate if the button has been released since the last frame. These three methods will return a Boolean value indicating if their condition was met or not with the provided key. There is also an any prefix that can be applied to these methods that will allow you to provide an, a collection that can be iterated over and will return true if any of the values provided meet the criteria of the method. Import also has a get prefix that can be applied to these methods in order to acquire an iterator over all of the values that meet the criteria. Import also has other helper methods such as press, release, clear, and reset that are used to initialize the state of the input device. You will need a mutable reference to the input for this, and you will not, in most cases, need this unless you are implementing your own input device, such as like an on-screen keyboard or other like input device that you may be interacting with with non-standard hardware. Once you've mastered the input struct, which Bevy uses for keyboard key presses, mouse clicks, and gamepad buttons, you can move on to the more niche axis T struct. This struct is much like the input struct, but greatly simplified. Axis only provides a single get method that will return an option consisting of a float between one and negative one from the provided value. Axis is primarily just used for gamepad, joystick, and triggers. Axis also provides a set and remove function for modifying the state of the axis input. In most cases, you will not have to interact with this because Bevy will take care of initializing and setting the axis values. If you're intending to use more than just mouse clicks on UI, it may be important for you to track the mouse's position independently or track the mouse's scroll wheel. For these cases, you will use the mouse motion and mouse wheel events. These structs will be covered in more detail about how to use them in part three of this mini series. For completeness, I will touch on the struct's contents here. Mouse motion is extremely simple, just consisting of a single vector two called delta, representing how much the mouse has moved in what direction. Mouse wheel is ever so slightly more complicated, splitting the X and the Y into two separate floats because consistency. Mouse motion uses a vector two for easy conglomeration of the mouse motion each frame. This will become more clear in part three. Mouse scroll also provides a mouse scroll unit that indicates if X and Y values represent pixels or lines of motion. Finally, there is another specialized version of input called touches that is used to represent touch device events. This has the same functionality as input, but always uses a U64 to represent an individual touch event. 
It also provides a just cancelled method and changes the get methods that I used in input to re instead of returning an iterator, return an option of the touch at that value. And instead introduces the iterator and iterator prefix to allow you to iterate over all the values that meet that criteria. Because again, consistency. The touch struct will be covered in greater detail of how to use it in part five of this mini series. But again, for completeness, I will touch on the contents of this struct. It consists of the ID of that touch, where the touch started on the screen, how much force was applied if the operating system supports that, the previous position that the touch was, last frame, how much force was applied, again, if the operating system supports it, and the current position of the touch and what force is being applied if the operating system supports this. Thank you for watching the video to the end. Hopefully this has given you some insight of where to start looking for information in the documentation on how to collect user input. Do like, comment, subscribe so that you don't miss future episodes in this series as I cover in more detail how you would go about using keyboard inputs and collecting them in your game along with other input devices. These videos have been separated purely for the sake of making it more concise to find the information you desire. If anyone knows any good clip art sites that I can use to get royalty free art for future videos, that would be appreciated if you leave a comment in the description.